Hi there, and welcome back. The holidays are coming up, <laughs> and so we need some personalized gifts for a loved one. And uh, what I want to show you in this video is basically a way to turn a profile of somebody's face into a rotational object like a like a vase or a candle holder. You know, there's different things you can make with this. And uh, you can see what I'm talking about, right? There's a face right here in the negative space, and there's a face right there, of course. And that is really easy to do in SketchUp, and I'll show you in this video how it's done. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. All right, let's get started. Ultimately, this is what we want to end up with. You want to have your rotational object. It should be solid so that you can 3D print it one way or another. In my case here, I left it open on the inside, but gave it a wall thickness. So if you go to X-ray view, you can see the wall thickness right there. But you could leave it solid too. You know, different things that you can make with this basically. Okay, ultimately what we need to create is this profile to get started. And that's actually really easy to do. All you need to do is pull a picture of the person in question <laughs> into SketchUp. And you can do that by just taking a profile photo and then dragging and dropping that image right into the SketchUp working environment right here. And then you can get started on, on tracing the outline of the profile. Now there's different ways you can do this. Ultimately, you most probably will want to be in top view. So I'm going to switch myself to top view right here. You could be in parallel projection view if you want to, but don't really have to necessarily by simply drawing on top of this image, you're going to be in plane with the image. And that's enough to get this to work properly. Um, but in any case, so now we need to trace this. <clears throat> There's uh, the line tool, which you can use to create a polyline to trace simply by clicking, click, 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 all the way through. You could use the freehand line tool, especially if you're on the iPad, SketchUp for iPad, and you can then maybe easier do these freehand lines of sorts, these, these um, you know, <laughs> since none of this is linear. <laughs> um, Anyways, uh, and, and then you can try uh, something like Fredo 6's Bezier Spline extension, which I have up here where you can actually use Bezier curves. You can also use polylines and then convert between one and the other. Um, things like Catmull Spline work really well for something like, you know, a face. Um, but you can, you can experiment with any of these here. I'm just going to keep it simple right now. I'm going to just use the line tool. Uh, feel free to adjust any which way you want to. All right, so all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just click my way along the profile so that I just outline that profile. All right. <clears throat> okay, so we got this traced and we can just quickly hide the image to see what this looks like. Eh, <laughs> good enough. <clears throat> now you can put more effort into this, uh, of course, to get this right. And then, like I said earlier, if you use the um, uh, Fredos tools, you can now convert this. Actually, I can just most probably show this right here. You can um, right-click on it, <clears throat> and then you could convert something like this here to a catmull spline. You want to most probably, you see down here on the right, reduce the precision to maybe three segments or less so that this doesn't get too bad. Well, this actually looks quite good. I like it. All right, so we're going to keep it like this <clears throat> because now everything's a little more curved and we're... Good. All right. So there we go. Now, the profile is done. <clears throat> that was the hard part. And actually, I'm going to just 
move this over to where I have some space, maybe like right here. <clears throat> and now we're going to want to turn that into the rotational object by making this um, basically an, an outline of half of that. And then we're going to just use uh, SketchUp's follow me tool to create that rotational shape. Now you can, of course, you know, rotate this and change it and, um, you know, change the orientation any which way you want to. I'm just going to leave it like this here. There's <laughs> most probably much more or, uh, um, cleanup that you could do. But let's say I want to go from down here to just about there. And then I'm going to go up to just about here. And then actually I'm going to create a bit of a shelf of sorts right there. And then I'm just going to go straight down until I hit that. All right. So there's my face. <clears throat> or basically the outline, <laughs> including my face, quite literally. And I'm going to get rid of what's extra. That's a little extra there. Most probably doesn't matter, but uh, it's cleaner now. Okay, so now we've got that. Now we're going to need to get our guiding path so that we can use the follow me tool. And I'm just going to use a plain old circle for that. Um, one thing to keep in mind is again the sides of that circle so if you want that to be rather smooth you need to increase that side count from the default 24. but i'm going to twist my view a little bit so that i can draw the circle on that plane obviously there's other ways you can do that too but i'm going to just capture that plane and draw that circle right there Gonna get rid of my circle itself because I don't need it. I only need this as a guiding line. And then for the follow me tool, there's different ways you can use that tool. One is, of course, you pre-select the guiding line. Then you go to the follow me tool and then you click the face and then you're all done. Ta-da! Right there. So that is one way you can create something like this here. Now, of course, mine is on the side, but, but you can um, you know, simply rotate that. Um, this is actually solid. So if I were to group this and look over here, it says solid group. So this is already 3D printable. You know, I might want to adjust some things here and there, maybe the base, maybe the top, any of those things. But this can go straight to your 3D printer. Now there's other things you can do too. I'm gonna just try that. Um, I'm gonna take out the top here. <clears throat> and then again, um, Fredo has some nice extensions that you can use. And one of them is the joint push pull tool, which is here. Or I can actually uh, just get it from right here. Bit of six, try and push pull, and I'm gonna do the thickener. Okay, so there's the entire thing selected. We're gonna go tools, try and push pull thickener. And we're gonna thicken this by a certain amount. And then this should have a thickness associated to it now, right here. Let me get out of this view here. All right, so that's one way you can you can work with this and how you can create something that's 3D printable, either as a vase, as a candle holder, or any of those. Now, there are some other things you can do, and you may have seen this in some historic art objects. <laughs> there are actually some vases in museums where, where one phase changes into another phase and uh, th that you know you can you can make as complex as you want with a lot of cross sections I only have two cross sections that are alternate as you can see here <clears throat> but if you do the same process that I just did with the outlining and then you want to arrange these guys basically 90 degrees to each other <clears throat> what you can do then is you can interpolate between those with yet another <laughs> Fredo tool. Now we're going to use the um, curvy loft right here. Let's see if this works right there. 
And then there are different methods. So depending on what you use last, this might look differently. This might just be a linear thing, just like this here. <clears throat> but um, if you kind of experiment a little bit with the different settings, uh, you'll find one that will give you your 90 degrees or the basically the tangential um, finish on the end here. And then with that, you can make your way through. I'm going to just check this. And you can make your way through and create all of these sides and then build up basically your four sides for this. So I'm going to just do another one. Uh, where is it on tools right here? Right there. This is going to work. Anyways, and you get the point, you know, you, now you just go through all four, you most probably need to um, straighten these, these faces, these are reversed right now, but you do get this change from one face to another, and it's actually quite smooth and, um, you know, <laughs> 3D printable again, once you, once you put all of those together and um, export them as an STL, for example. All right, <clears throat> so that is a technique to make some nice <laughs> vases, candle holders, any kind of presents that use this rotational portrait technique, um, just like this one here. I hope you find it useful. Let me know what you think. And